invited us to uh, pray for the baby. All we know is that it's been sick since birth. It's a month and a half. And so we just laid hands on her. And as I looked down when I was praying, she smiled the whole time. So it was pretty, uh, wow. pretty amazing. Yeah. She's a month and a half old. And she's been sick. One second. Her mom is 18 years old, but she had to go to the hospital. Have a wife and two daughters. One's 13 and one's 7. Una tiene 7 años, la otra tiene 3. I appreciate your worship uh, service tonight, Pastor. Gracias por ese tiempo de alabanza y de oración, Pastor. We kind of came dragging in tonight after a long day. It was good to get pumped up a little bit. I was ready for you to dance a little bit. <laughs> My question for you tonight is, what is in your balloon? This balloon tonight is going to represent your heart. The Bible is powerful because it is very simple. A lot of times we uh, complicate the Bible by uh, just more than it should be. I'm just going to share a little bit here tonight. It's going to feed off a little bit about what Ricardo shared with you tonight. I don't know if you know it, but pastors are not perfect. I uh, may seem at times that we're supposed to be, but we're not. I don't know about you, but uh, sometimes I'm a little bit scared about what comes out of me. The things I do, the things I say. Sometimes I ask myself, where did that come from? The Bible tells me where it comes from, my heart. I would like to share three scriptures with you tonight. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doings. I'd like to look at a verse in Luke chapter 6 verse 45. It says, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks, but the heart is full of I'd like to look at Mark chapter 7, starting at verse 17. After he left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull, he asked? Don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile him, for it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside, Defiled a person. The truth is, we need to protect our hearts and our minds. Solomon, who was the wisest man in the world, wrote in Proverbs 4:23, "Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life." What he is saying here: what you put into your heart, what you put into your mind, is what's going to come out of you, whether you want it to or not. I believe today that Jesus wants to do a, a, a work in our hearts. Many times we come to Christ thinking that we must clean up our life before we give Him our life. But what we really need to know is that He wants to come into our life and give us the power to clean up our own life. A few years ago, uh, I was working with some glass and I cut my thumb. Of course, I pulled it out the glass. But days later, it was still hurting. I went to the doctors and got an x-ray. I didn't find anything. What happened was there was a callus that, that grew on my thumb. But eight or nine years later, for our Sunday morning service, I looked down and there was a sliver of glass sticking out of my finger. Pulled it out, it was in there for all those years. That piece of glass became part of me. There are thoughts and experiences embedded in our lives, in our hearts. Things we've done, words we've spoken, places we should have never been. Those things are in our hearts, they're in our minds. Many times we don't even know they're there. They're calloused over and buried deep. But when the pressures of life were applied to our lives, things come out of our life and we didn't even know we're there. There are a lot of things that Jesus does not want part of our lives because they have the power to control our lives. He has come to set us free. And he said this in John chapter 8, verse 31. He said, if you remain faithful to my teachings, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In verse 36, it says, if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. Today we'd like to play with you. Maybe there are some things that you have buried deep down in your life. Jesus wants to remove that sliver of that thing out of our heart. Pero Jesús, de hecho, quiere quitar ese escalpel de tu vida y realmente hacerte libre. 